Hello all lovely people out there, this is Kevin from CC Byte Pair where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives and the time has come for the promised follow-up to my interactivity in InDesign video and this part 2 will be about form fields. Okay, forms. Most people probably filled in plenty of them and I think working as a designer you probably end up making a form at one point or another and then if you're like me you'd rather do it in InDesign as opposed to Microsoft Word. So, alright then, let's not delay any further and jump straight into InDesign. Here I have a prepared demo file with all the content I want placed and ready, but it's missing the actual form functionalities, so that's what we'll be doing now. For this we'll need the Buttons and Forms panel, and I have it in my layout already, but you'll find it under Window and Interactive over here. And one thing before we get started, notice I have separate boxes for the actual white box with rounded corners behind and what will become the actual form field. This is only because I wanted some text inset and corner roundness and I noticed the form fields ignore that formatting. Now then, to start us off, select the first text box here, it's just a regular one so far, then head over to the buttons panel and here for type we can open the drop down. And under PDF only, we have all the form field types available to us. This first one is just a regular text field, so I select that, and naming it is always a good idea. For these fields, we can ignore the events and actions, that's more for buttons. However, under PDF options is where we find what we need. And it's not too complicated, I want it to be printable, if someone wants to print the form. A name is pretty mandatory, so why not set it to required, um, meaning it has to be filled in before it's submitted. And if we check password, it will not show what you type in that field like we're used to online. And I don't want read only, it's a form field for the user to fill in, so I don't really know when you use that. The uh, name doesn't need to be a multi-line and the box doesn't need to be scrollable either. Then lastly, we need to set our font, and sadly it doesn't work to just use a paragraph style or something like that, it needs to be set up in here. So in my case, it's going to be Nobel, regular, and um, maybe 12 points. Great, that's our first field done. All uh, these fields here, you can see, can basically use the same settings. So we can copy this box and then just change the name on the copies. However, that's kind of boring, so let me just do some editing magic. There we go. And here's all our text fields. And if we don't want all of them to be required fields, we might go in and change that. Otherwise, there's only two changes I want to make. First off, for this password field, uh, I'll just select it and go over here and check password. Secondly, the comments box. Here I want to uh, go and toggle multi-line and scrollable so that the user can type as much as they like. Alright, let's try some different form types. Over in this box I want area codes for phone numbers and I thought a drop down list could be nice. So we'll select it and go over here and choose type combo box. And there's also a list box that's kind of similar but that one doesn't give us a drop down list. And uh, our options look pretty similar except for this list item field. And here we can now type in what we want in our drop down. And I'll start with a default value, something like this, and just add it on the plus. Now let's get some area codes in there. And uh, I'll speed that up a bit. There, now we have some examples. Then we also need to set our font once again. And uh, that's the combo box. And uh, now we get to the list box. Let's grab the text box here and go over to the panel and choose list box. And the settings look pretty much the same as for the combo box. The only difference being that we can toggle multiple selections right here, allowing the user to select more than one item in the list. And uh, why not do that? So then, just as we did before, we can type some list items in here and uh, adding them with the plus. Uh, I'll once again speed that up. And uh, there, now we have the list box. That's all the text fields. Now we just need our checkboxes, radio buttons and regular buttons. And uh, why not start with the checkbox? I'll select the pre-made square here and choose type checkbox. And we should now see that we automatically got a check added. 
And this works just like a regular button where you set the appearance for the different states. And if I toggle these two, we can see how the checkbox will behave. If I want to customize the appearance, I simply make sure I'm in the right state then make whatever changes I want to. And uh, firstly, I think the check is kind of big. So I'll locate it in the layers and uh, just scale it down a bit. There. While I'm at it, I might as well change the color as well. Something like that. Lastly, I want to invert the bevel effect on the square. So I select it from the layers and go over to effects. And I want bevel and emboss, which is already set up. And then just change the direction to down. Then we can just toggle the states to make sure it's set up as we like it. Yeah, looks good. Next up are the radio buttons. Select them and uh, choose type radio button. Now here's the trick with radio buttons. If they all have a unique name, the user will be able to select them all, but often that's not what you want. And to fix that, they need to have the same name. So I'll rename them all contact. And uh, instead we give each one a unique value down here. To make it easy, I'll just type in numbers. So one for this one, and then for this one, a two, and then for the last one, a three. Now only one can be selected at a time. Regarding the appearance, it's the same deal as with the checkboxes. Select the state you want to edit. I'm going to find a little circle that was added, and uh, then we can just change the fill and uh, the stroke to the CC pipe dark blue. Then lastly, once again, change the bevel direction. So one second, find bevel and emboss, and uh, then direction down. And uh, this, of course, I want to do for all three, but I'm going to spare you the repetition. Now we only have two items remaining, being the buttons down here. And if you watch part one, this should probably be pretty familiar. We select the frame and we choose type and then button. And let's name it, no, reset. And uh, now we need to add an action. Down here at the bottom are some form specific ones. And the button says reset. So I thought this could be used as the clear form action. So when the user clicks it, the form gets cleared and they'll start over. And if we want to, we could also add a hover effect by toggling the rollover state here and making changes, but I'm not gonna bother with this uh, this time. Last thing before exporting this, we just need to set up the submit button. So go to type and button, and then we name it submit. And then we choose the action submit form. Now, this is a feature that you may or may not want to use. I read up on this a bit and I'll show you the info I found on Adobe Pages. So basically you can have it being uploaded to a server or alternatively being emailed. And I don't have a server to try this on. And while the email option does work, I don't know if it makes it much easier for the user, but the option is here. So if you want it, uh, for the sake of demonstration, to set up the email option, simply type in mail to in one word and also a uh, colon and then followed by the address. Also, these buttons will obviously not work for print, so we could uncheck the printable option here and then they will disappear when printing. All right, that was all over here in InDesign. Now we can export this and we can do control E. And uh, remember to choose interactive PDF, otherwise these things won't work. And uh, I'm not going to change anything in here, so let's export it. And here's our final form. We have our drop down. the uh, password is hidden when typing, and uh, radio buttons, I think, works, yeah. We can select multiple items from the list, and uh, I think the checkbox seems to be working as well. And we can start over with a reset. Great. We could call it here, but the reality is that Acrobat has form functionality as well. And there are things that we can do there that InDesign cannot. And I don't want to make this an Acrobat tutorial, but there are a couple of things I would like to adjust in here. 
To work with forms in Acrobat, go over to Tools and choose Prepare Forms. And here we have a list of all our form fields. And while I like the drop down menu for the area code, it would be great if the user could type as well if their code is not in the list. And to fix that, just right click on the item from the list and choose properties. And then under options in uh, this little checkbox, allow users to enter custom text. That one I wanna make sure is active. Now I want to change the color of the font in the text fields. So we can just select them all at once and then go to properties and then appearance. And then we can just change the color here to something that we like. Okay, if you made it this far, thank you very much for sticking with me. And just for you, my last tip is that if you find this highlighting of the fields annoying, simply go to more over here and turn off highlight existing fields. Also remember to save your PDF changes. And that was all I had for this time. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you liked interactivity in design, also check out my part one where I make an interactive presentation. And uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video right here on CC Pipe.